Once again, welcome back to another episode of Mr. Ben Plays Pokemon Violet. Now last we left off, uh, we attempted to make it our way to the Titan Dragon, or the Dragon Titan I should say, and um, I didn't get too very far from it. Now I did go ahead and since I ended off that episode, I went ahead and went off screen and did a insane catching thing. I also went ahead, I finally bred my uh, Sprigatito. And not only did I uh, breed my Sprigatito, but I also traded her for my friend's uh, Quackwaval and bred a shit ton of uh, Quaxley from it. I'm keeping this one, the one that I named Josuke Dolan, uh, because it had six in every stat and was of serious nature. Uh, the rest of these, I'm either going to... I'm going to trade at least two of these to my friends and then the other uh the other five are probably going to just go ahead and be sent off to wonder trade so um same th same will go over these four two of them will be going to my friends one's going to je one's going to dm uh the other two will just be sent out to wonder trade i did go ahead and train up my team just a tiny bit more Um, almost all of my team is in the 40s, with the exception of, I think, Anubis and, yeah, Chomper. Uh, but since I got, but since I finally have, um, Cinder back in the party, or not back in the party, but now since I've got Cinder bred, I don't really think I need to have, um anyone else outside of the party here I don't know who I want to get rid of actually uh, I might just go ahead and toss Anubis out and that's only because of the fact that I don't know when he's gonna learn flamethrower right on top of my head but that'll that will uh, we'll get that we'll across that bridge when we get to it uh, I also came to the area outside Mezzagoza because I wanted a, a, a nice open area to run around and just hatch the eggs. And I figure that, well, since we're in the neighborhood, uh, we'll get into a fight with a hop hip. And by that I mean we're not going to get in a fight with a hop hip. But since we got like five gym badges, I figure, you know what? Uh, since we're in the neighborhood, I say fuck it. We're by the school. Let's go to class. Because we can actually, uh, attend some classes. And maybe take a couple of those midterms. Get some, uh, free items. That a couple of my buddies have mentioned getting. So, uh... There you go, screw it, let's do it. It's yeah. Sorry about that. Ugh. Interested in some classes? Uh, yes, actually. Part with Mr. Hassel, yep. Class will begin soon, don't be tardy. Alrighty. Hello class, it is I, Hassel, yet again. I have been told that my previous lecture about the terrestrial phenomena was very well received. Thank you all for your kind words. In fact, Ms. Dendris specifically requested that I impart even more battle knowledge to my students. So I've decided that today we'll take another look at how Pokemon can terrestrialize. And of course, here's Professor Gibble to help us. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you'd be so kind as to raspalize for us. He was the grass type last time, so... Ooh, now he's an ice type. Now, what do we have here? Last class we saw grass type terrestrializing, but this time we have something of a different shape. Observe a Terra Jewel resembling a snowflake. Its dendritic shape is stunning to behold. 
a little chilly standing so close to it. So class, what terror type do you imagine this jewel might represent? Ice type. Excellent, Mr. Ben! Full marks for you! The reason there's a snowflake shining above Professor Gibble's head is simple. It is now an ice type. And because Professor Gibble's currently the ice type, ice type of moves would not be very effective against it. Keep in mind, usually they would deal quadruple damage to Gibble. Now here's some trivia about snowflakes. While snowflakes may come in different shapes and sizes, most are classified as hexagons. Just think of it, snowflakes fall from the sky, taking similar shapes without anyone saying that they must. Indeed, we are all we are all snowflakes. Just remember, you are unique, just like everyone else. Huh. Do you not feel the great mystery of nature? The beautiful enigma we live in? Ah, huh. oh, but this is a bit of a tangent, but Mr. Jock's glasses are also hexagonal, aren't they? I almost forgot to mention you could change a Pokemon's Terra type at the treasure eatery located in Medley. Though I must say the cook there is a little prickly. You'll need to get on her good side if you want her help. Now come prepared for next class because it's time for your midterm examination. Thank you for today, Professor Giggable. Alrighty. Let's take the art midterm. And uh, see what we got. I do hope you're all ready because it's time for your midterm examination. Focus and do your best. And begin! The name of the gemstone that glows over a Pokemon's head when it terrestrializes is the Terra Jewel. And the answer to question one is the shape of the flowers, it is the grass type. Most snowflakes are classified as hexagons. The eatery that allows you to change the Terra type is Padali. What makes something beautiful? There is no correct answer. Time's up, that's it for today's test. Pencils down, please. I would rather not have students worrying about passing or failing in my art class, but tests are tests after all. Anyway, good work everyone, you can check your results at the front desk. That should have been full marks, but... <laughs> Feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm and four questions to pass the finals. Let's see how you did in your art test. Five out of five questions correctly. Huzzah! That's a passing score. Congratulations! Mr. Hasella asked us to give this reward to any students who passed the exam. Five small experience candies. <laughs> Keep doing your best. Alrighty. Uh, we're just going to save progress here. Because I've had my game crash on me twice now at this point. I don't want to screw anything up. Hello, class! It is I, Hassel, yet again. I'm pleased to say that everyone did very well on the midterms. As a reward for all your hard work, we have a special guest visiting us today. Is Professor Gibble again? Now then, Brassy, please come in. Ooh. Brassius? The gym leader, Brasius? Hell yes! It is him! I am Brasius. I'm an artist, and I focus exclusively on grass-type Pokemon for my work. <laughs> Brasius here creates ma mainly three-dimensional pieces, such as statues and the like. One of his major works is the installation titled Surrendering Sunflora, found in Artisan. Many of you who've challenged the Artisan gym are no doubt familiar with these sculptures. Yes, I do recognize some faces among your students. I hope you all understand how fortunate you are to be able to attend Haas's classes. Old Haas is the man who saved me when I'd lost all hope and given up on myself. 
but he never gave up on me. I do not exaggerate when I say that he is my mentor in life. It is precisely thanks to Haas that I was able to establish my current art style. Ah, dear Brassi, I have nothing against reminiscing about old times, but today I hope you will guide this class in the way only you can. Of course. Let's see. Ah, uh, why don't we discuss what Haas mentioned? The, sun, the surrendering sun flora. Can anyone here tell me what my mood was when I crafted its detached expression? Uh, I would go ahead and say a sad mood. No, 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 completely and utterly wrong! Huh. When I made that sculpture, I had surrendered all hope. I was prepared to give up everything. I had resolved to give up my life as an artist if that piece did not receive proper recognition. Well, hence the name Surrendering Sunfloor. I would assume so. That's exactly it, Haas. When I started out as an artist, I experienced many hardships. I even became deathly ill and fell into a slump that drove me to desperation. I began worrying only about what would sell. I was concerned only with fame and fortune. But all of my pieces during this time had no depth. They were all shallow trash! It was then I met Haas. He helped me realize how petty I was being, but I'll spare you the details. In the end, I was able to leave all of that behind. That is when I crafted the Sunflora! <laughs> Remarkable, even I did not know the full story until now. This kind of thing is hard to tell someone, especially when they're so close to you. Now, I don't doubt that you adolescents will often find your heads crowded with worries. My advice to you is simple, be honest with yourself. And do whatever your heart desires. So long as you don't cause trouble, that is. That is all for me. I must have been beginning to feel a bit embarrassed, so I bid you have farewell, Haas. And farewell to your pupils as well. Oh, Brassy, I can't believe it. Such a wonderful class. Thank you. Oh, the youth no more! Listen, <laughs> uh, that's out of the story. Come on. Alright, now I got uh, art class number five. This I was, since I have five uh, badges, I would assume this is going to be the last art class I'll have to take for a while. <laughs> but then again, I don't know. I could be wrong. The midterms came after three classes, so maybe the finals will come after six? Hello class, it is I, Hassel, yet again. First, allow me to apologize for losing my composure during our last class. I was so touched by Brassy's story, I simply couldn't contain my, couldn't, simply could not contain my emotions. I'm sorry for making such a scene. I certainly got a very stern talking to from this time after that class. Yes. Anyway, let us shift gears and dive into the material for today's class. Have any of you have heard of the Ten Sites of Paldea? As the name would imply, there are ten sites in Paldea considered particularly beautiful. Among them, I would say that the Grand Olive Orchard is the likely the most accessible. You can see field after field of olive trees on the hill, from the hill on the way to Cortondo. Two waterfalls are also counted among these ten sites, Fury Falls and Casaroya Falls. And there's also the peak of Glacido Mountain, known as Paldea's highest peak. There's another cliff on Glacido Mountain that's named after its rather unique shape. So let me ask you, my students, what is the name of the three-pronged cliff on Glacedo Mountain? No need to glass fit straws? Uh, Glacedo's Reach? A very good guess! I think something reaching would stretch out farther, though. The three-pronged cliff on Glacedo Mountain is in fact known as Glacedo's Grass. Though its shape is far too stubby to be that of a human hand, I would imagine someone thought it looked like a Pokemon app grabbing something. There's also the mountains in Area 3 of the East Province, where you can get a good look at Lavincia, particularly gorgeous at night. In fact, the view is so brilliant it is known as the Million Volt Skyline. I hear it's quite a hot spot for dates, and deservedly so for having such a romantic view. 
I imagine it's, well, what do the kids say these days, a uh, very mm -hmm, fleek selfie spot? <laughs> of course, you may feel that not all 10 sites live up to their grandiose names. How often do we visit some tourist spot only to be disappointed? It's not to say that you shouldn't visit them, only that you should keep your hopes in check. The important thing is to go yourself and see them with your own two eyes. Sometimes a disappointing experience can be worthwhile in its own way. Take a chance! That's it for today, class. Thank you for your attention. I probably should be speaking to Hassel after all of these, uh, these classes here. Uh, park room. He's not here in the art room. Okay. Now I wanted to get a little closer to Mr. Hustle, but I uh, guess that's not going to be a. Guess that can't be uh, done. Book entitled Types and Moves 2. I just saw that sticking out of the, the thing and I figured, you know what? Types and Moves 1. Ah, yeah. Yeah, this is all stuff I already knew about that. Okay. And let me guess, this is going to be Types and Moves 3? The Uva Academy School Song. You want to read it? Over Grand Mezigo's estate is our dear Uba, where we enter his seeds and leave in fruition. Our minds wide as the crater for wise educators to fill with individual spirit and future ambition. Teach us well, O Grapes of Paldea. I can only wonder what the Narahat song would be like. Do I can go to the school store? Actually, yeah, I want to go to the store. I want to see if there's anything I can buy. All sorts of handy items, huh? Ooh, Moo Moo Milks. Hell yeah. Got me some of those. I just realized that these are actually slightly ex more expensive than what you'd get in the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, vending machines. I'm just gonna go back to the entrance hall. Is there anything else I can do in terms of the art class? Interested in classes? Uh, no, can't take any other classes at this point. At least in regards to art. <laughs> Might have to wait until getting another badge for that. Uh... Let's get some of these others out of the way. Let's go to, like, Comac. You like Comac with Mr. Sagawaro? Let's get the, the midterm done on this one. See what prizes we get for, for this. I see we have some energetic young ones in our class this time around. You may call me Mr. Sugwaro. The time here will be spent obtaining knowledge and skills indispensable for daily life. Many of you have left the care of your parents to live here on your own in the Academy Dormitory. I pray the knowledge I impart to you will improve the quality of your lives and necessities thereof. Food, clothing, and shelter. Of those three categories, I assume the most pressing and interesting for you all is food. 
When you eat sandwiches on your picnics, the HP of your party Pokémon will be restored. You'll also gain something called Meal Powers, which can provide all manner of benefits. For example, these powers can make Pokémon easier to catch or increase the experience that your Pokémon receive. I think you will also find that the breadth of these effects can be expanded by crafting sandwiches of superb flavor. Once more, there's something that's particularly important if we wish to receive meal powers with even more helpful effects. Let me see, Mr. Ben, tell me, what must you keep in mind to receive even more helpful meal powers? Uh, my choice of fillings and condiments? Perfectly correct! Perhaps you were already aware of this fact from having helped your family with cooking at home? Your choice of ingredients, including both fillings and condiments, is an important factor in gaining even more helpful meal powers. For example, using sweet ingredients in your sandwiches will help you gain egg power. Including numerous bitter ingredients, on the other hand, will gain you item drop power. Learning to aim for specific effects when crafting sandwiches will almost certainly make your culinary endeavors more enjoyable. Please be aware, however, you can also receive meal powers by eating at restaurants. I must say I would feel the utmost joy if you all learned much here in my class and came to better understand home economics. Our time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all adieu. Right, let's see if uh, Mr. Sanguaro is in the home acronym. room. Welcome to the Home Ec Classroom. I consider this to be my very own castle of sorts. Ah, <laughs> Persona 5 <laughs> things, <laughs> Persona 5 impressions. Oh boy. Master Ben from this from last 1A, rumors of your activities always seem to be bombarding me from all sides. My activities? Indeed, people from all over have been talking about how strong of a battler you are, and the amazing Pokemon you take along with you. You are quite the object of everyone's interest, though I imagine they may be a bother for you. The home at classroom is something of a place of rest for the academy students, you see. Here they delight in sharing the latest gossip and the like while enjoying a light snack. You come up quite often in those talks recently, Master Mr. Ben, so, I, so much I'd find myself intrigued. If it's not a burden for you, I would very much enjoy having you come see me again sometime. I am thou, thou art I. I love it. Alrighty, let's uh, take another class. We got a few more minutes in this recording. I'm probably not going to on screen all of these, but. Let's go ahead and do Home Act 2. Away your phones, it's time to begin class. In our last class, I believe we talked about the effects you can get from food on picnics. You can receive meal powers and even restore HP for all Pokemon in your party. A truly convenient means of healing your Pokemon. Unfortunately, as I'm sure you're aware, it's not suited for use in battles. When you cannot make food or when you wish to restore HP quickly. In times such as those, you should make use of healing items such as potions which you can purchase from Pokemarts or the school store. Healing items are immediately effective and can be used any time you open your bag. They are, however, consumed after one use. Potions restore 20 HP, Super Potions restore 60, and Hyper Potions restore 120. The pricier the item, the more HP it will restore. Keep in mind how much money you have when stocking up on these items. However, unforeseen happenings are an inextricable part of traveling from place to place. Imagine, if you will, the following scenario. You find yourself with injured Pokémon, but you have no potions, you're out of sandwich ingredients, and no Pokemon centers nearby. Tell me, Mr. Ben, what should you search for when in a perilous situation with no way to heal your Pokemon? Uh, items on the ground. Perfectly correct, Mr. Ben. I see you are well learned in survival techniques. You see something shiny on the ground? It's actually an item that's been dropped there. You might be able to find a restorative item, such as a potion or an orange berry this way. You can use the R button to send out your Pokemon to pick up such items as well. And then there are berries, of course. Berries, by the way, aren't like items from shops. 
If you let your Pokémon hold one, it will decide on its own when to eat the berry during battle. Letting your Pokémon decide this timing for itself can be quite interesting. At any rate, if you find yourself in need of healing, I suggest you look around for shining items on the ground. If you can't find such items, there are other methods you may employ for healing your... Ah, uh, but I see the bell demands topics that wait. Our time together has come for an end for today. I bid you all farewell. Now, I didn't do this with Hassel, but I wonder if I can... Uh, do this... With the others. Oh, my crown. Please feel free to relax and unwind if you wish. No need to concern yourself with me. Okay, I... Nothing on that. We'll do one more class in the midterm. And I think we'll call that a recording. You'd like home egg with Mr. Saguaro? Yes, please. Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Put away your phones. Time to begin class. In my last class, I taught about HP restoration. However, after class, I was asked by several of you, asked by several of you about power points, commonly known as PP. When a Pokemon loses all of its HP, it faints and can no longer battle. When that happens, what happens to a Pokemon? Or sorry, what then happens to a Pokemon when it loses all of its PP? Well, it can't use its moves. Perfectly correct, Mr. Ben. Perhaps you know this from first-hand experience. Haha, <laughs> more than you know, brother. When a Pokemon runs out of PP, it can no longer use its moves. However, each move has its own share of PP, so that you can mitigate the loss by using a variety of moves rather than just one move repeatedly. If a Pokemon loses all PP for its moves, it will only be able to use Struggle, an action that also damages the Pokemon that uses it. In order to avoid this predicament, it can be restored at Pokemon Centers along with HP. Items such as Ethers and Max Ethers can also be used to restore points. Be careful not to confuse potions with Ethers in the heat of battle. However, Ethers are not sold at shops, so you should use them judiciously if you find them. The stronger the move, the, maximum, the lower its maximum points. Do not waste the uses of these moves unless you wish to quickly run out of points. It is important to find balance in a Pokemon set of moves. As you can see, HP isn't the only thing you must keep an eye on while adventuring with Pokemon. I hope you will all take care to ensure that your partner Pokemon can perform at their best as you each engage in the treasure hunt. Our time together is coming in for the day! Our next meeting will be an examination day. Be sure to review well. And yeah, this is all basic stuff, really. Alright. All back midterm. Class will begin soon. Don't be title. <laughs> No idea where that came from. I was looking at the Gengar behind the counter. <laughs> the time will come to test how well you've all learned here in my class. Let's begin the information simmering in your let's begin before the information simmering in your brains from the last minute cram session fades. Alright, what is not an effect of picnic meal? That would be increasing speed. Which of the following affects the kinds of meal powers received from a particular meal? That would be the filing or fillings of condiments. The Orin Berry restores Pokemon's HP. Leandro wanted his Pokemon to decide on its own when to use his item in battle, so he gave him an Orin Berry. This will work as he hopes. That is true. If a move Pokemon if a move runs out of Pokemon PP, it can no longer be used. If a Pokemon runs out of PP for all of its moves, it can only sit there in frustration. That is false. Alright. I hope you were able to give the examination everything you have. Please remember to ask for your scores at the front desk before leaving for the day. That should be a perfect score, but... 
we'll see what we got. Feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your results. You need to get three out of five to pass the midterms and four to pass the final. We got... Perfect score! Hell yeah! That's a pass. And we just got more small candies. I'm going to assume that that's probably what we got for all of these. But anyway, um, not much really done here on this particular episode. We didn't actually get a lot of progress in. We just got a couple midterms out of the way and got some experience candies for it. But uh, next time on Mr. Ben Plays Pokemon Violet, I think what we're going to go ahead and do is actually get a little bit of progress in. And instead of doing some uh, tests, we'll probably just go ahead and start making our way uh, back to Zapapico and uh, taking on another Team Starbase. Or maybe I might go ahead and take on that Titan Dragon. Or uh, that Dragon Titan. I don't know. We'll have to see. Until then, I will catch you guys in the next episode. See you guys then. Later, y'all.